Now, what's another principle or law that we can use to find out information about outer space? This one is called spectroscopy. This is the science of studying the spectral lines of a star or a nebula to determine its chemical composition. Every atom, this is uh, something that we learn in uh, chemistry and in physics, that atoms are made up of nucleus and electrons. Electrons are going around the nucleus in different orbits, okay? We're not going to go too much detail in this class about that because we don't want to make it into a, a full-on chemistry class. For example, this one shows you the nucleus of a hydrogen atom. The nucleus of a hydrogen atom has one proton. And then the different orbits that the electron can occupy are called n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, and then n equals 4, and then so on. Okay? Um, usually, well, actually always, the higher orbits have higher energy. n equals 2 has a higher energy than n equals 1. n equals 3 has higher energy than n equals 2. So what happens when an electron is very excited it jumps to a higher orbit, and then immediately it jumps back down. Okay, so when an electron is uh, when an electron is excited, the atom is excited. We call that an excited state of the atom. The electron jumps from n equals one to n equals two or three or four. Then when it jumps back down, what happens? It releases a photon of light. Okay, uh, uh, an energy, a unit of energy. So what is this showing you? When it's jumping from the third to the second state, it's releasing a photon of light corresponding to the energy that a red light packs in it. Okay? So it corresponds to a wavelength, happen, happens to correspond to a visible light of red light. You see? Now, when it jumps from the four to the two state, should it release more energy or less energy from the four state to the, to the two? Should it be more energy than the three to two or less? Well, look at the gap, you see? This is a smaller gap. And then from the four to two, bigger gap. So should the energy be more? I'm kind of giving you a hint. Okay, good, you can answer. So if the energy is more, should the light, uh, should the uh, wavelength be smaller or bigger? Remember, smaller wavelength means what? Higher frequency. Higher frequency means what? Higher energy. You see? So does that make sense? Yes. If the 3 to 2 is giving you a wavelength of 656, the 4 to 2 should give you a smaller wavelength corresponding to a higher energy and which happens to also correspond to a visible light blue. You see? And we can keep doing this. We can see what's, how about when it jumps from five to two, six to two, you see? What's gonna happen? Okay? you're going to be creating the lines of hydrogen known as the bomber lines. Okay? 3 to 2, 656 nanometer. Okay, let me uh, shift it over here. 4 to 2, 486. 5 to 2, 434. What's happening to the wavelengths? Getting shorter, shorter, shorter. Energy getting more, 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 more. 6 to 2. 410, 7 to 2, 397, 8 to 2, 388. Can you see these two? What's the range of the visible spectrum? I just wrote it up on the board, but I erased it. From what to what? 700 to 400. Is this in the visible spectrum? Probably not. You won't be able to see this. Are these four in the visible spectrum? 
Yeah. Okay? <coughs> so those are the only four that I need you to learn and memorize and study. The hydrogen lines are called the bomber lines. The bomber lines correspond to a jump from 3 to 2, which corresponds to the 656, okay? Green light, green line, which corresponds from 4 to 2, 486, and then a jump from 5 to 2, even more energy, 434, and then a jump from 6 to 2, 410, okay? <coughs> so, uh, Basically, visually, that's this one right here. You see, 3 to 2, 656. 4 to 2, 486. 5 to 2, 434. 6 to 2, 410. Now, are there other jumps that hydrogen atom might make? Yeah, there's one called the Lyman series. Why don't I want you to memorize that? Besides the fact that I'm a nice teacher, I don't want you to memorize a lot of things. Why isn't this as important, you think? Okay, it's a jump from 2 to 1. 121, 3 to 1, 4 to 1, 6 to 1, 7 to 1. Look at the wavelengths. Even smaller. These are in the what range? They're smaller than uh, the wavelength of violet. They're in the ultraviolet range. Can you see them? No. So you won't be able to use this for, the scientists can't use this for spectroscopy purposes. So they're not visible. They're the Lyman series. Another one, Pasha series. This one is uh, 4 to 3, 5 to 3, 6 to 3, 7 to 3, 8 to 3. Look at the wavelengths there. 1,800 nanometer, not enough energy. They're in what range? Uh, uh, it's on the other side of red. The below red, infrared. Infrared, 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 infrared. You can't see them. So the Pasha series, even though we can uh, study them, they're not as relevant. The one that we care about, bomber series. Okay, so what are these going to look like? Here is what the scientist will see when he's studying the spectral lines of a uh, hydrogen. Okay, this is what it looks like. The background looks black. So what you do is you take a gas that is excited and you take a diffraction grating and you split the gas into the spectral type and you would do this in like a, if you're taking a physics lab or a chemistry lab or when you're studying spectral lines you will actually perform this lab. Um, you will break the hydrogen line into its spectrum. You see here 656? That's this one right here. You see? It appears red. What's the 486? 486, what color does it appear? Green. Okay. 434, you can kind of barely see here. Very dark violet or blue, you know, looking. 434 right here. And then what's the other one? 410. Do other elements have different lines? Look at the picture. Helium. It has a red line, but it doesn't correspond to 656. It's another number, 660 or 670. It has an orange line. Does hydrogen have that? Ah, much different. How about this one, green? Hydrogen doesn't have that. And then it has three violets. One, two, three. So how many lines overall? One, two, three, four. Five, six, helium has six, sodium, an orange and a red right next to each other. And not much else. Mercury, red, red, three oranges, green, two violets. Do you notice every element has its own spectral line? What does that remind you of? Every human has... Different fingerprints, you know. If you commit a crime or whatever, you cannot hide. You have, you have different DNA. 
Okay, we can tell who you are from your DNA. Every element we can tell from your spectral line. You see? This, this is what this picture is trying to show, spectral analysis, you see? Mercury, helium, lithium, thallium, cadmium, strontium, barium, calcium, hydrogen. Hydrogen is the one that I want you to know. One red, green, two violets. So if you forget it on the test, you can walk up here and cheat. No, I won't let you. Okay, sodium, okay, so <coughs> you don't have to know the other ones, but just know that different elements have different spectral lines. So how is this useful for the astronomer? Take a look at a star, take a look at a gas in outer space, look at how many lines it's got, right? By comparing the lines of our known elements to the lines of that star, we can know what is the chemical makeup of that star? What is the chemical makeup of that nebula? What is the chemical makeup of that planet? Okay. <coughs> For example, when you guys are doing your reports on the planets, Jupiter, Neptune, one of the things I'm going to ask you is, what is that planet made up of? Does the planet have hydrogen in it? Does the planet have helium in it? Does Jupiter have hydrogen in it? Does it have helium? Does it have methane? Does it have uh, sodium? And then you're going to come up here and you're going to do your reporting. How do you think we know what elements the planets have? We do exactly this process. Somebody who, who knows what they're doing looks at the planet through a uh, spectroscope, separates that planet's light into its spectra, and then says, aha, uh -huh, I see the spectra of hydrogen. The planet has hydrogen in it. Since the hydrogen is the brightest, the planet has mostly hydrogen. It also has the lines of helium, and it's the second brightest lines. So the planet must also have helium in it, and then so on and so on, you see. That's how we can find out what's in a planet, what's in a star, what's in a gas, it, all of these things. So we can all not only know what's in it, but what's the relative abundance of that element in that planet, okay? <coughs>